Alright. Oh man, this week felt like it breezed by. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, so... Uh, we're gonna be playing some Bloodstained. Uh, I've been... Oh, uh, hope you all are doing well. I'm doing fine. I just... I had a really... annoying... deal about trying to get some project stuff settled for school, but... things are fine now, but... you know what? It's... it's all... good. I'm good. Things are fine. Just student stuff, as you know, but... Today, we're going to be going through some Bloodstained and perhaps also talking about some of the gaming news that recently came out. Because, let's face it, when, Ninten when a Nintendo Direct comes around, there is no way you can't talk about it. Even more so if there's a PlayStation State of Play happening at the same fucking day, which is really interesting to me. So, yeah. Uh, my opinion of everything, like, with that Direct is whole, holistically positive, I'd say. I, like... Like, I can understand people's, like, general jokingness over, um... over this Direct and how heavily it was skewed towards a particular kind of genre of video game, which, you know is not necessarily a bad thing, just different. Uh, and it's clear that they had a prerogative when wanting to get a per get that particular genre up. I don't know. But... I'm not too mad about it. I understand. <laughs> but then again, the, the people that complain about too many RPGs or too many farm sims are probably the same people that got angry when Hero was put into Smash Brothers. So it's like... Let's face it, uh, the people there probably only have one joke about it. And I can understand the frustration, you know, about not having your, your thing you like be put in to a Nintendo Direct. But the game's not, like, the Direct's not lesser for, like... So many of the times when you see these kind of extreme reactions... They act like they're gonna get Malcolm McDowell into having to play the game, and it's like... The reviewers, maybe, but you're not. The average player that's just viewing a Nintendo Direct isn't gonna be forced down. I don't know. But they act like it's the end of the fucking... S but they act like it's the end of the century with that shit, and I just don't understand why. Anyway, we're gonna be going through this. Uh... Oh, God. That's right. Um, I think the first thing I want to do, actually, before I go through this area, is get more fucking healing items, because I was... The things that, that has been killing me when going through this area is how spent I am on healing. So I'm going to do that, actually, before I do anything else. Along with take care of some stuff that may be... Ow. Actually, wait, there's also that, uh... There's also the one quest for the lady with the murder boner for demons, but... I think I could save that. Alright. But yeah, other than those things, things have been normal. The state of play, if anything, I felt was way more of a disappointment. If I'm being completely honest, because, like... When they announced it initially, they were like, Oh, we're going to be showing you uh, games from our, fr from our friends and developers over in Japan. And I'm like... That's awesome! Chance for some cool JRPG news, or, or cool beat-em-up stuff. And I got one beat em up thing. But. Man. <laughs> that state of play. Like, it just. It just felt like it kind of didn't really do much for me. Which I'm not going to criticize too heavily on, because obviously there's some people that really enjoyed. that likely enjoyed what was out there. I'm just. I'm just not of the uh, biggest. Yeah. 
Not not the biggest fan of some of the stuff that was on there. Did I ever get this weapon before? Doji Giri. I don't remember that. Hmm. Might need to get that one actually. Hmm. I'm gonna equip that because the Garm being slow was, or the Gram being slow was not my deal. Now, great sword expertise. Sure, let's make that. No enhance. I can't enhance anybody. Cool. Um, I'm using. Uh, Petra Ray, Bone Toss, Hammer Knuckle. Keeping the sword fragments, because I need those for upgrades. Still haven't gotten a fairy wing, though, which is... Eh. I'll go with this. I'll go with this. Alright. And, of course, I can't prepare anything, but that's fine. Yay, it's faster. Yeah, she wanted a crepe. I have, so I have no idea how to make a crepe. Is this then we have a deal? What are you looking to sell? What are you looking to sell? Is then we have a deal? So overall. The news that's come out, I'd say, a lot of good stuff. Um, in particular, I'm I'm excited for. Let's see, there are three things in that in the in the direct that caught my attention. One was the. Can I not? Oh, I probably can't sell him because I he's equipped to me. Hold on, hold on. Because I have like seven of these guys. Did you... What are you looking to sell? Oh. Wait, why can't I sell Silver Knight? That's bizarre. That's really weird. Alright. Okay. Well, I still can't get the tea dress thing because I'm still missing one component. Um, let's see. What was I? N yeah, Oricalcum. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else I can really do about any of this. Can I make the tea dress? Damn it, I can't. Dreadful racks. Where the hell do I get those? From the. Stop that. I have no idea where I could even get that. I may have to rely on uh, getting it from a quest or something. Alright. Well, that's kind of it as far as uh, stuff I can do in the town is concerned. So let's head back. Yeah, the in the direct, the two things that I well, the two ish things that I'd say, no three, the three that I'm looking forward to the most I would say are the new Fire Emblem game because at this point I am a little in too deep as as a fan. Uh, the Octopath Traveler two because despite my criticisms that I have with the game, alongside criticisms that other ha others have fairly made against it. Um, I enjoyed the Octopath. I enjoyed Octopath a lot, and to see a second game come out from it is a really positive thing for me. I, I, I like that they're continuing with this, and that those HD 2D devs are getting the a lot of work out of it. Like, I, I really like that 
that square has been pushing through that HD 2G, 2D barrier. Or that just kind of dev style. I like it. And I like that a lot of other devs have been taking notes about how to do that same thing. I'm actually following a couple games on Steam that are doing those exact kind of... Well, not exact, but similar kind of aesthetic. I don't know. I just like what's being done. So, Octopath Traveler 2, and then the third game I'm looking forward to in that in that direct lineup of games would be uh, is Harvestella, actually. Of the up uh, because of the farm sim games that were showcased in that direct, Harvestella to me sounds like it's the most un unique in terms of the fact that it has an overarching narrative. Like, it has something, it has like a, a clear, it has a clear thing that you're meant to essentially uh, fight against alongside with doing your daily farming stuff. And on top of that, Harvestella has a demo out, which I for certain am going to, you know, take a look at because I'm, I'm interested in that. And also, man, it makes me so happy they do this every time. Whenever Square Enix have done their demo stuff, I appreciate that they let it carry to the final game, and that's definitely the same deal with, um, with Harvestella, so I'm gonna definitely look at it on that merit alone. Because I'm, I like that. I like that that's a trend for them. That they just... It's, it's good. It's, it's a good business practice. I like it. It's a good practice as a game dev and publisher to just have your demos be available one, indefinitely, and two, carry the progress over so the players don't have to do the first section over again. It's so nice. Anyway, um... So yeah, besides that, I mean, it felt like there was something for everybody, so to speak, in that direct. Was there a lot of the farm sim stuff? Yes, but... I don't think you ought to just judge the direct based on those. Like, I think just that was a really funny coincidence, if anything. And it's not like the farm sims they showed were ones that looked god-awful. The only one that I'd say I wasn't the biggest fan of, like, appearance-wise, was probably the, uh, the fairy one where you're just using magic to do all your farming. But everything else... I mean, shit, they're, they're even including the options of identifying your character as non-binary and having gay marriage, which, you know, the gay marriage thing, that's become more commonplace, but how rare is it that a game lets you play as non-binary? Even Harvestella's got that. I don't know. I'm, I like that option. That's really cool. It's cool that, they're, that they've included that, uh, that possibility for a player. Like maybe I'm just maybe I'm just easily impressed, but I just think that's really cool that a dev and publisher are willing to actually include that for players that would want those options. So, yeah. Overall, I'd say it was a positive direct. And as for the state of play, uh Oh yeah, and the new Zelda, which Yeah, I'd play it. I mean, I like Breath of the Wild. It's not my favorite Zelda, but I but I definitely like what I saw to an extent. I mean, I feel like it's best described that this whole Breath of the Wild love thing is because it's as uh, it's as some YouTubers put it, it's a Zelda game for people that don't like Zelda, like don't like the formula that Zelda's had for the past few decades. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of my deal about it. Like, I like it, but it's not my favorite Zelda. Nowhere close. So, I'll, I'll get... I'll get this new one. You know? Because I have a... Because I am a Zelda fan. But I'm not gonna... You know... 
I'm not I'm not gonna make this like my make that my game of 2023 because Lord knows there's gonna be way too many games that that will compete for that way too many like 2023 already sounds like it's gonna be a fucking banger year for video games. So I'm not I'm not holding my breath about it. I'm not I'm not holding my breath for for Zelda Tears of Tears of the Queen's Dead. Tis Rafe, that's right. I already got that. Or I got, I had it, but then I died, and now I need it, now I had to get it again. Lethargy, fire a beam in the designated direction that slows. Ooh, that's nice. It's just interesting to me that the reaction that everybody's had, like... Because I remember, Breath, like, this Breath of the Wild sequel was, like, the thing that people wouldn't shut up about for a numerous amount of directs. Much like people... God. Much like the Metroid fans who just still, like, still hope against all hope that, no, this time, surely there'll be a... Di surely this direct will be the one that reveals the the Metroid Prime trilogy on on Switch. Sh this one must be it. I'm I'm not denial heavy. I'm not in denial, but it's but I, but now that we've gotten that news of the Zelda sequel, it feels like it feels kind of like the whole thing just sort of petered out because of how many of the farm sims were out. Like and I get it. You know, I, I get it. It's like, haha, funny joke. Nintendo kind of went heavy on the farm sim stuff this direct. But some people got what they wanted. I was wanting news on whatever Fire Emblem game was next, and I got that. I don't know how I feel about the new Fire Emblem, but I'll give it a go. It looks interesting. They, they definitely decided on an interesting way to have an integration with the past games, which I'm not, like, that's the thing that I'm not sure about, because part of what made me like Three Houses so much was the fact that they didn't just, that they didn't keep referencing all these past glory games, but now that they're straight up doing that, like, it's a straight up gameplay mechanic, and I don't know how to feel about that. I'm not sure if I like that or not. Well, actually, no. Now I think about it, no, it's it's not something I'm entirely positive of. Not to make it... I don't know, I just... I just don't... Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's good. Like, my problem with, with Fates was how it felt like it was a veritable, like, clone of Awakening. And then, of course, due to the su success of Awakening and the sort of referential nature of the first Fire Emblem game, to the point that the NES version of the game was put on Switch, it, it just feels like... It just feels like Nintendo are were stuck, rather, in this mindset of, like, oh, we must only reference these particular games because that's what they that's what people like they like these games and it's like yeah we do but we also like other fire emblem games like fucking uh, path of radiance and radiant dawn but falls on deaf ears you know just falls on that so having these past this feels like a really weird single player well 
a really weird non-gotcha version of Fire Emblem Heroes. That's what this feels like. Like, okay, so they're just straight up summoning these past Fire Emblem characters as, like, stand-like abilities that enhance you in gameplay. All right. Different. But I will admit one thing, is that the visuals do look a bit more clean compared to, uh... Compared to Three Houses. Like, Three Houses, for as good as it's... As for good as... For a lot of good that it had, its visuals, I wouldn't say, were some of the some of the cleanest, if I can be completely honest. It just wasn't. Like, the game's... The game was fine. The game was great in a lot of ways, but kind of needed some work in others, and I've mentioned this before, about how Three Houses feels mechanically bloated. Um, and this new game doesn't look as mechanically bloated, but... It just, it just feels like this funny thing of like, if the game's not mechanically bloated, it's, it's keeping on with references to the old games and not even all of the old games, just the popular old games. And then when it's not doing that, they have to throw shit against the wall because fuck it, it worked with Awakening. You know, throw mechanics at the wall and see what sticks. Throw, throw more in, more, must be more. Much like uh, that one Simpsons horror episode where they force-fed Homer a bunch of donuts. I just... I don't know. I'm cautiously optimistic about it, even if the main character's design, especially with the hair, could use a little tweaking. Just a little bit. Like, I, I saw a Twitter post that... re Well, kind of retooled the character's hair to be like, okay... What if the main character's hair was a gradient rather than just a stark blue and white sort of dichotomy? And after seeing that, I was like, wow, that looks way better than what we got. I don't know. I just... I just think... I just think the direct was good. And that the game showcased and stuff that was shown was nice. I'm just not in particularly I'm just not in I'm just not particularly like throwing my hands up in terms of surprise. What would have really thrown my hands up in surprise is if they, you know, showed some kind of just if they actually listened and ported some old GameCube games or something. So, yeah. I I don't know. I'm just I just like that we got the... I like the news we got. Um, I like the news we got, and I am and I look forward to what more else they may have to show, but I'm still also keeping my eye out for other sources to maybe give me something that I can legitimately throw my, throw my table over for. Right, I need a dragon egg. And I guess I got a dragon egg from the fucking thing in the library. Come back. Man. That poor lady's not gonna get her crepe. And I'm not gonna get a fucking tea dress, because I have no idea where to get a dreadful rag. Alright. Uh, so, yeah. Generally, I'd say I'm positive about that direct. A solid 7 out of 10, I feel. Kind of focused a lot on one particular kind of genre, but you know what? That's fine. That's fine, you know, let's, like, there are other kinds of Nintendo fans other than the ones that are, like, I don't know. I just feel so sorry for some of the fans that want their franchise to be acknowledged or their favorite ones. Like that one guy who asked why there hasn't been a new F-Zero game in so long after he bought a huge amount of stock in Nintendo. Just shit like that makes me feel so sorry for them because it's like, yeah, a lot of the franchise faves uh, are getting more attention, and that's because a lot of them have been more popular. I mean, I imagine... Uh, I don't know, I... I think about this, and it's like, all of, all of the fan bases of Nintendo's properties have gone through that in some way. Fire Emblem went through it before Awakening came along. Donkey Kong, to some extent, had that before Tropical Freeze happened, and some of the ports of older games. 
Kirby had that before. Wait. No, Kirby's been kind of consistent. Um... Trying to think what other ones were there. I, I guess Zelda, before Breath of the Wild came out, people were like, when's the next Zelda? I'm trying to think now, like, what other franchises have had that? Mario has it. Mario didn't have that. Kirby didn't have that. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I'm really drawing a blank on it. Well, Star Fox? Oh, poor Star Fox. It's just all of those. It's like, they've proven that... It's Nintendo's proved been just shown time and time again that uh, those 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 franchises just have not really gone gangbusters for them so it's like why invest into something that's clearly not giving them the money they need for returns and everything like and the, I guess the easy fix on that would just be like well then just at the very least put older games on the switch to make them easily accessible and then boom you're you're you get at least some kind of consistent revenue stream because at the very least it's available because that's not like if they're at the very least available and not kept in like a hell of not of only being within physical versions then yeah I I I can say like that's for certain agreeable I, I would say make those older games available because that's not as unreasonable as demanding a new game from a franchise that's clearly not making returns for them. Because in the end, they are a company. They have to make returns, and sometimes an investment into an old thing doesn't pay out. And, you know, leave that up to devs that do want to make those kind of things again. Like Igarashi with, with this. But... I don't know. I, I'm, I don't have I don't have all the answers about this because this is a pretty interesting problem to have when you when you have a lot of quality games but your franchise has seen no new entries and with those no new entries you're also experiencing like just the drive of like man how great would it be if they actually made another one of us or another one of these? For us. I don't know. I'm of the mind of wanting a traditional Zelda again. Because, again, as much as I like Breath... I do like Breath of the Wild, but it's not really that much of a Zelda game, I feel. It's... It feels like... It just feels like a different kind of game that has Zelda in the title. If anything, my version of... of those poor bastards that want uh my version of the of those poor guys that get that are like why no metroid prime trilogy on switch i'm of the mind of why no wind waker hd on switch like i understand that maybe there were some bits to the wii u that were a little essential but didn't wasn't that the same deal about some other wii u exclusives that they somehow got on switch so it's like what's the hold up on wind waker I don't know. I'm not gonna get too harpy on it, but it's it's been being being as I've said, Nintendo is probably one of the most frustrating companies to ever follow because they have so much potential. If they have so much potential for profit, if they just fucking if they just fucking understood what their fans want, if they just. If they gave their fans what they what they wanted to some extent, obviously they can't please everybody. But if they did some, if they just did some certain things, they would absolutely be making gangbusters. But you know, sometimes a, sometimes you just gotta love how a company can be utterly tone deaf to what their fans want. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the uh, <laughs> the the state of play from Sony that 
I had no strong feelings about it at all, save for like one announcement. And I almost feel like if if any company kind of lied to us, it would be the the state of play, because the state of play said like, oh, we're gonna be featuring a lot of games a lot from our Japanese devs and publishers. And you'd think from that mention that that would mean like, oh, cool, we're gonna get some like stuff from uh, Sega and all these other companies. But a few of the a few of the games showcased were from Western Studios, and it's and those were the ones that got a lot more buzz, save for one, which is the one that I was the most interested in, which is that uh that feudal era Yakuza game, uh, like a Dragon Ishin, that that got me hyped, because if you don't know anything about this channel, I have been playing through those Yakuza games for a while, and I really like them, so to see another Yakuza game be set in the past like that is really something. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to play it, because apparently it, it was released, but not for the West, which will be a fun, fun deal. Fun deal. Uh, as for other things, I don't know, the state of play I felt was wait, was like The Nintendo Direct was better than the state of play. I'll say it. That's that's the deal. And I And I don't know what hopes to have. I have no real major hopes about um the Tokyo Game Show other than I just want Dragon Quest news. Please. It has been Pro, mostly, it's been around a year since your 30th anniversary stream where you showed a title drop for Dragon Quest XII and some really nice looking gameplay and screenshots of that HD 2D remake of 3. Please give us some fucking news about that. I'm begging you. I just want that much at least. But it may not happen because because they've been tight-lipped about it. Like, we've only ever had the two trailer announcements of those games. <sighs> and, and a, but I'm not one for trying to push expectations of what I want to see too much on an event, because that, I think, is unfair. So I'm just gonna say I would like some Dragon Quest news, but I'm not gonna damn the whole Tokyo Game Show weekend if there isn't Dragon Quest news. There. That's my deal. Anyway, Alfred's here. Oh, I just noticed that the center of his outfit has roses all, or flowers all the way down it. That's cool. I cannot. I gave Jeebel my word, and I intend to keep it. Very well. This sigil was not meant for you, but we are far enough from the castle that it can contain you here. Goodbye, Miriam. Stand down.
Actually, I have to wonder. Bloodsteel, right? Does blood bloodsteel? Why is his blood white? Is this a glitch? <gasps> is this a glitch? Because his blood... I... Did I get like a... Did I get a funny Danganronpa moment? Yep, I must have gotten some kind of glitch. Cause um because I don't think blood is his blood is supposed to be white. Stop run Stop running in circles, old oldman. There we go. Got him. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? So, um, yeah, the, the Yakuza thing, and then I guess the Stellar something other, that looked interesting. Stellar Blade, I think. But besides those, the State of Play didn't really do much for me. God of War looked all right, but I haven't played God of War 18, 2018, so, eh. But anyway, um, yeah, Tokyo Game Show, keep my eye out on that. Uh, hoping to God that there's any kind of cool news about it, about, like, some of the things I'm interested in. Again, a crumb of Dragon Quest, maybe Persona 6, if they feel like it. I feel like maybe they have something they could show, even if it's just a teaser. Granted, I'd like more, but still. Um, God, what else? Uh, probably... I mean, there may be some more Nintendo stuff that wasn't shown in the Direct. I don't know. I'm, I'm just... I'm not going to expect too much out of it, because doing that's just going to set myself up for letdown. And I don't want that. I don't think any of us want that. So, yeah. That's kind of it. Oh! Th there's pretty much going to be guaranteed some Final Fantasy 16 stuff. Easily. So, yeah, uh, just just keeping an eye out for Tokyo Game Show. And if you're interested in, in that stuff, I recommend you do the same. That will never happen. I have to make it happen. I have waited too long for this chance. Our oh, last chance. All right. And we've won. Then we can heal up a little bit thanks to his white blood, which I just... Wow, I think I encountered a really funny glitch. Uh, yeah, that's a glitch. That is a full-on glitch. I've never seen that before. Um, let's go with Welcome Company. All right, what have we got here? Deep Sinker, here we go. So, yeah, now I can go underwater without having to use the uh, the ability that I, that I got from that one monster, which is nice. All right. Alright, 
let's save. And then we will head over to the the hub town. I can finally say goodbye to this fucking sand place with the slow ghosts. Oh, there's more port- oh, so more portraits show up as you upgrade this. Cool. Okay. Well, that's really neat. Richter the ruffian, but judging but doesn't he say the die monster line? Help me to the kill the Here's what I've turned up. Helps kill the God. Here's what I've turned up. Help kill the Okay, and where are the Okay, they're not on this part of the map. Cool. Alright. Well, I'm gonna go to the underwater segment. Are you so? Now, I want to also see, I don't think I unlocked anything new. Demon Horns, Hermit's Beret, yeah. Been kind of rocking a lot of the same gear I've had for a while. What? Oh! Invincibility at the moment of second jump. Oh, if I could get a fucking fairy wing, that would be awesome. Holy shit. That'd be good. Ooh, that'd be nice. That would... Ooh. Ooh, that'd be really good. Even though I've learned to jump in midair, there are still places in the castle I can't reach. Even Zangetsu must be scratching his head. What? But I heard Zangetsu had developed the ability to fly. <clears throat> Miriam, I developed the ability to fly, Miriam. Uh, what? Here, he sent a message arrow. In the Searing Hood Caves, seek the strange demon. Strange demon? That's it? He says he saw the demon falling up. <sighs> I'm not sure I understand. It sounds like finding that demon is my best lead. I agree. Now, is there anything else you need? Miriam, I gained the ability to fly. It's the best thing in the world, Miriam. They'll someday invent a, a means of which you'll be able to travel by air. Um... I don't think I got to try that, so I'll have the stat bonus for that. Battle boots. Stinger. Nothing there. Uses gold to reduce it. Right, right. And I, and she doesn't have the tea dress because I haven't found it or bought it. So, veritable wet fart there. Order made scarf. Yeah. Thank you. That's about as good as I can get there. All right, let's save real fast, and then we'll. See about going through the uh, the underwater areas. So I would say, and <laughs> it's really hilarious to think about how much buzz God of War. Uh, Ragnarok is getting, considering how God of War 2018, like, a majority of it was sequel setup. <laughs> like, so much of it was full-on sequel setup. 
and now that the sequel is here, this feels like it's actually the big one, you know? It, it, it feels like the big thing. I guess maybe 18, 2018 God of War was meant to be like a, a big ol... A big ol' like, just general setup of like, hey, this is Kratos' life, and this is boy, and this is their dynamic. But... Can't help but feel that maybe, um... <laughs> can't help but feel that maybe it ends up causing that game to feel a little... <sighs> What's the best way to put this? Not unnecessary, but... Kinda... Kinda just the first trilogy effect, you know what I mean? Like, it's evident that they had a particular way they wanted this to go of like, okay, this is the first in this new trilogy we're doing. How are we going to go about this? That kind of stuff. I I don't know. Anyway, um How's my how's the level twenty? And this is level twenty seven. Hmm. Get the rest up to that level. Actually, I'm gonna get Bloodbringer up to it. Because I want to use it at its full power and for it to maybe gain some more of its color back. There we go. And you know what? Now that I am with this, I. Now that I have sinking, I don't need this anymore. Oh, cool. I can multi-jump. Hell yeah. Keep the sword out. God damn bats. Love the death death noise of that. It's so goofy. Actually, let's equip the, 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 this guy. Well, no, the fairy. Let's get the fairy on so that she can level up a little bit. So overall, I guess this has been a fine enough week for game news if you're interested in, in some of the games out. Like, it feels like there was something for everybody, to an extent, because 
I will admit the farm sim stuff, like, yeah, it, it's, like, it's a good joke, but, you know, they if they're legit good games, then, you know, let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. You know, people people who like all the farm sim stuff, uh, they're gonna be fucking spoiled for the next few months. Uh, that's where I come from, right. Finally, I can grab all these chests. Ugh, they're bugging me forever. That's probably the biggest thing about Metroidvanias for me. Just the, just the feeling of like, got this ability. Oh great, now all this, now all these spots that I remember not being able to be enter before, I can go to them now. Thank God. Now, wasn't there more that I missed? Oh, that over there, yeah. So... Yeah. So there's still more that I have to get. Oh, I didn't replace the gunman scarf. Hold on. Oh, that's why, because it lowers my defense. Uh, by one. Mm. Thing is, I don't know what int even does. Does it increase my mag mag magic damage? I don't decrease my magic damage. I don't know if it does or not. Come on, man. All right. But yeah, I guess you could say, like, say what you will about those, um, about all of the farm sim stuff shown. Just let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. Really, that's that's all I can say about it. Just let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. And if what they enjoy just so happens to be a farm sim, or one of the, or one of the, how many were shown? There was Harvest Stella, there was that Fairy Farm one, Rune Factory 3, that Harvest Moon one that a lot of people were fucking really excited for, because judging from what I heard, that was like a lot of people's childhood uh, one. So that's four. Did I already say Harvest Stella? I don't think I did. Well, Harvest Stella was one of them, so I... Like, four or five of them, I'd say. Which... Wait, I think I did this wrong. I did. I was... Yeah, I went about this the wrong way. I need to head backwards from the entrance to the sand area. Or head backwards from the teleport spot to the sand area. So I can go down. Uh... So I can go over to the uh, other big water spots. But yeah, I'm just of the mind that as frustrating as it is to see Nintendo not ever really do anything with the franchises that they created years ago, they are they they have to do whatever they can to make as much money as possible because. It's that classic, it, it just feels like the... It feels like if they do decide to... Uh, if they do decide to cater to these older games, they don't know how much of a return it's gonna be 
especially towards the more, like, recent fan base that got into their Nintendo Switch library. Because, you know, someone who may have had their first Zelda game with Breath of the Wild may, may not have uh, felt anything towards getting... Uh, towards Twilight Princess on, on a Switch or something like that. I, I just... I just think that... I just think that there are certain things that a company is willing to want to take risks on to make or even port or perform with or something. And sometimes some just really don't really see that risk. Like they don't see the risk and they don't see the reward and the risk of making a new F Zero game or even porting an old one over because they don't know how that'll go back go by. We might know because we're fans. Well, specifically, my buddy Jordan's a fan. I'm I'm not an F Zero fan. I've never played one of the games, but but I think to how frustrated they are and how people just go like. Like, even, even putting, like, F-Zero GX from the GameCube on Switch would be enough, but they don't do it. It's, and it's just like, I get it, man. I get how, how absolutely just in their own head Nintendo are about trying to, about just, on one hand, saying like, hey, don't pirate our shit, you know? Like, play our games the way they're intended, and don't try to emulate or pirate them. But on the other hand, just don't- they don't give people what they want. I don't know. I've, like, Lord knows I've talked about this so much on this channel, and I'm- and I do my best to not harp too much on a point that I've reinforced many a time, but... You know, if they didn't keep doing it to themselves, we wouldn't be talking about it, you know? If- if only they didn't do it to themselves. If only. No hidden walls there. Strider Belt? What does that do? Is it an accessory? Yes! A belt made to withstand rough movements impo improves a uh, sliding ability. Okay. Designs and improves your back step. I don't need that. Makes it more likely to drop gold. If I have a point where I need to buy a bunch of stuff to make a recipe, then I might do that one. Finally, yoink. There we go. Let me hop up here. Yoink. I'm 
really nothing hidden there? I want to think that, that'd be like a perfect hiding spot for an item. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to come back this way. I'm to say that for certain. Is this? No, that's not the end of it all. No, no, because there's something to the right here. Yeah, here we are. Take that, Shovel Knight. All right. Renant. Okay. Still looking for a dragon's egg. <laughs> like, ugh, man. How the fuck would Crepe don't need a dragon egg? You couldn't have just made it a regular egg? Does it really have to be a dragon one? Eh. Okay. Another fillet. And then we have the waterfall over here for when we first enter this area. Still think that enemy looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh monster. Yeah. Now, there's still a segment somewhere. Oh, wait, I'm stupid. Hold on. Didn't... Oh, wait. No, it doesn't work. Uh, I was gonna say, like, can't I just use the summon chair ability that I got a while ago? But I don't think that works, because... Because of, um... There we go. Yeah, nice and cheesy. Nice, nice little bit of cheese I could do there. Not the right spot that I was looking for. Oops. <laughs> it was the other area. But regardless, good thing to check this anyway. Ah! See, it was good to come back for this one. Because I got some ammo capacity. Okay. And, you know what, just to make this easier on myself, and to lessen fast travel time, let's do that. Take this. 
because I missed one bit of the map in the very bottom right corner. Like, it, it's not that significant, but... The Traveler's Ring thing get, makes me have higher attack, uh, depending on how much of the map I've revealed. So, any little bit will help. Ooh, new spear. That's cool. stat bonuses. Big stat bonuses. Why is it... That's a weird map quirk. I don't like that. Why is it like that? What? Because there's no hidden wall. What? That's bizarre. Alright. Uh, cool. Fucking strange. Anyway. There's a waystone to get back. I'm gonna have to keep at least one waystone on my person uh, because of the uh, Benjamin quest, because I know where he's gonna be next. I know exactly where he's gonna be next, so I need to be prepared to get him back to his home. If you don't know, remember who I'm talking about, the guy that goes, Oh, Paris! I've never been to Spain! have anything that I can make, right? Nah, outside of what I've already made or could make for armor, but yeah, I I just need this, but I don't have the rags. It's fucking, I don't have it. So I'm gonna hunk of ice. Did I just make seven of these? I thought I was enhancing. Wow, I'm stupid. <laughs> All right, they might sell for a lot. Oh. I made seven of them, didn't I? I did. Oh. Well, I don't know when I'm gonna find more of those, um. That was not a smart move. Oh. I, I, I mean, I could get more Sapphire, but... Ah, man. Let's remove curses. You know what? Yeah. Let's get, let's get nine of those. About nine of those will work. 
because curse is not a fun status ailment. I don't like the prospect of having my magic and health be cut in half. All right. Actually, something I'd like to do is go visit Todd. See if I got any new haircuts that I can make. Because now that I've beaten Alfred, maybe he's got a new style. Because it wasn't until after I beat up that blood vampire lady that we, or vampire lady that we got a, that we got another hairstyle off of him. Okay, I'm gonna actually change the welcome company because I'd rather have some range. Okay, that's fine. Uh. Ah, mm, a little too much startup for my taste. Strike your surroundings with Merciless. That one I've seen. That one I've seen. I think I'm just gonna stick with Throwing Axe. So really, no new style after that, huh? Oh, I'm sticking... Oh, I'm doing that. That gives off major witch vibes. Hell yeah. Look at her! I love her. Love the look. What triggers him to have different hairstyles, then, if not... boss fights? Hmm. Weird. Alright, um, so... Let's get over here. Yeah, there's the, the news in gaming basically to sum up all of my points that I talked about. For the first for for this Nintendo Direct and state of play, I'd say yet yeah, Tuesday was good. It was it was good to see all of that news. Um granted it was really hard to not what like it was so hard to have to try and stay spoiler free for it because um because Nintendo apparently loves to do these directs in the morning and on Tuesdays I have a class in around 8 in the morning or no 9 around 9 in the morning so when you have a direct happening right as I'm about to be on campus I don't have enough time to eat my breakfast and then go into and then watch the direct. So I had to wait until after class to view the whole thing. And like I was telling my people that are that were keeping their ears to the ground on this one, like, hey, no spoilers, please. That was a funny noise. Um, hey, no spoilers, please, because of um, because I'm in. I'm going to be in class. I'm not going to be seeing this until later. And. Yeah, it, that, that was definitely a good call because there would have been some things that I would have liked the full surprise of, and I got that. Whether or not... And I understand that others don't feel that way, but you know what? That's fine. Just so long as we aren't, like... Just so long as we aren't attacking each other over it, then it's then I'd like to think, you know, be critical over what was... Sh be critical to an extent, and... I just generally say don't let your expectations dictate what is and is not a good show. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm probably not explaining this very well, but I just, I'm just of the mind that maybe, just maybe, people could stand to be less judgmental over what a company puts out because sometimes a company just sees something that might profit well and they just do it. Not the best mindset, but I'll but it's literally all I've got for that. Yeah. Wait, what? That's Dominique. And Alfred? This was your proposal, Exorcist. Explain yourself. I should have been there. But you broke your word as well when you laid that trap for me. I wasn't about to allow the book to fall into your hands. 
Why would I want it? Revenge, perhaps? For your parents. Someone has been putting ideas in your head. <sighs> Miriam! Huh? No, wait! You got some splain to do, lady. I would have preferred you not see that. So the trap Alfred laid was for you? Yes, and that's why I sent Zangetsu to deal with it. He has the power to stop Alfred from teleporting. I thought he might be able to contain Alfred while we dealt with our bigger problems here. It makes sense. But what was all that about your parents? Revenge? <sighs> I don't want you to get the wrong idea. So I suppose I had better tell you. My parents were exorcists, like me, but during the demon outpouring ten years ago, they were killed in battle. So I have my reasons for hating demons and that accursed book. I'm hey, so dude, how much did I miss? Um, nothing much, combo. Just um, just talked about that there was like three ish games from the Nintendo. Di no, four. Four games from the Nintendo Direct that I look forward to. And one from the state of play that I was really interested in. Uh, and according to uh, the showcase done by the developers of the Yakuza series, there's going to be an eighth one. And I'm just, I'm just looking at all this and then looking at my catalog of Yakuza games and then looking at my looking back at them and being like, God damn it. Uh, I better get a job. I better get a job soon. Better, better be able to get a full-time job soon to afford all this stuff for my catalog because, man, a lot of games are coming out that I want to get. What are they? Uh, the new Fire Emblem game, which I'm cautiously optimistic of, but I have my reservations that I mentioned before. Just generally that I, I just wish Fire Emblem would get to mo move on with its unique stuff over, say, just rolling around in the glory the glory grass fields of the of the past games but whatever I'm, I'm that's a that's a point I've harped on a lot um Octopath Traveler 2 Harvestella and the Breath of the Wild sequel uh, Tears Tears of Queen's Dead haha ha, lol lol England Queen Dead <laughs> um but yeah that's um those are the four that I'm most interested in. Everything else I thought was neat, but not anything I was particularly, like, foaming at the mouth for. I was surprised at that Fatal Frame reveal, though, because apparently that's a Fatal Frame game that Suda51, like, worked on, I believe, or played. Like, Suda51 was involved with, with one of... With, the one that was shown, I believe. I just don't remember what the deal was. Was it... Sh was... Let me check. Fatal Frame... Lunar... Eclipse. Uh, Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Let's see. Directors... Yeah! S uh, Suda51 co-directed the game so yeah it had been stuck in japan it, it's like the fourth fatal frame game and it's been in japan for years but this is the first time it's revealed to the west which is interesting so yeah it's a it's a horror game that suda 51 co-directed which is really interesting to me plausibly may get that but, as I said, money's tight, so I'm kind of being selective about the games that I put on my absolute buy list. But, yeah. For the Octopath Traveler 2 thing, I hope they do a demo of that. Much like they did with 1 and Triangle Strategy, because... Gotta love how on top of it Square Enix are with their demos, where it's like, yes, this is a lengthy demo that you can replay uh, if you so choose. And if you do keep your save file and everything on it with a particular uh, run, you can transfer that save to the final game. I love that thing they're doing. Keep doing it. It's so good. It's such a good, 
idea for demos that I wish more devs would do. It's so nice. Especially with JRPGs. So, yeah. Uh, those are the four from the Direct. And for the state of play, uh, there's the Yakuza... There's the Like a Dragon Ishin game. Where it's just like feudal war... Feudal... Warring States era... Feudal era Tokugawa stuff in a Yakuza, in like Yakuza style, which I'm, that got me, that got me intrigued. That was the one from the state of play that I was like, ooh. I let go of the hatred years ago. All that matters now is that I gain control of the Lieber Logayeth and prevent it from ever being used for evil again. All right. I'll help you. Thank you. I'll do all I can for you in return. Now please let me go girl boss my shop. Oh Bayonetta! I forgot about Bayonetta 3. I still haven't played Bayonetta 2, would you believe it or not? And and I realize how heretical this next statement is gonna sound, but when I played Bayonetta 1, I played the PS3 version, which you know is not the most ringing endorsement for that game. I mean, I remember really liking it when I played it, but... Haven't played any Bayonetta games. In and out for the stream as usual. That's fine. I... I have debated about playing those on stream. I mean, they're on Switch. Well, Bayonetta 1 is on PC and all the other platforms, whereas um, 2 is only on Switch, but... I've, I've thought about it. I've thought about getting Bayonetta's 1 and 2 and playing those on stream before 3's out, but... But... I have so... But as I've stated, I have so many games already that I would like to keep streaming and playing. So, I've got my prerogatives to, of certain games to get. And also, you know... Again, financials. Just... Yeah. But, uh... In, in an overall sense... There's already a Halloween decorations up, and it's just September. Also, the cold's definitely coming. Yeah, I'm... I'm awaiting... I'm awaiting for... Well, it's probably already showed up. Every person I know is likely going to have their personality changed to... Halloween, Halloween, Halloween... Uh, Halloween Town covers and... Uh, and drinking pumpkin spice shit. Which, frankly, I never really saw the appeal of. I don't really like pump. I don't really like the taste of pumpkin myself anyway. So it's just like, you do, you take that, you take that flavored coffee shit. That's not for me. But, but go off, girl boss. Go off my. Go off gaslights and gatekeepers. You you go off on that. I'll just sit over here with my normal normal black coffee and be just perfectly content with things. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that uh, that uh, that Halloween stuff is already being advertised in September, much like how Christmas stuff begins to get advertised in November. Which you know makes sense. It's probably more of a marketable holiday than Thanksgiving, but eh. And it's like, what holiday is there to market in? Like, what holiday is there to market in September? Like, I guess. Labor Day kind of has that because, you know, Labor Day kind of has that with some Labor Day sales that you can do, but besides that, Come back if things stop. nothing, like, you're not really seeing people put up Labor Day decorations, <laughs> as funny as that would be. Hello? What are you looking to sell? Uh, nothing what there. Okay. But yeah, I'm about ex I'm about as excited for the cold, if anything, because I'm s like, as I said, I got so fucking sick and tired of the of the hot weather, just making my streaming space utterly unbearable in certain parts, like absolutely just. Uh, pull my hair out awful, but things are things are looking up now in that respect. I'll be it was a bit warm today, but I just 
I had spent most of my day in the in my school campus anyway working, so that's fine. Did I not get the... Fell in love with another tra tracker called Delph Mask. Recreates the sound of consoles like the Sega Genesis, NES, Neo Geo, etc. Gonna use the Sega Genesis, but haven't gotten around to working on the songs. Well, I hope you enjoy that, because that sounds really cool. You'll get to make full-on arrangements of things in a particular style. There we go. Finally, I get this. A pirate hat. Fitting! Fitting that I get an accessory that's not even that good. Or that I've ar that's already outdated to me. So yeah, just I'm I'm optimistic about a lot of the games shown. Hope they go over well and hope people enjoy them. But I'm not like again, it's gonna have to take an absolutely fucking showstopper surprise to make me erupt out of my seat like I used to back in the day. Cause I'm still of the mind that I'm still of the mind that one of the best or some of the best years of Nintendo announcements were in 2014, when when the Wii U was kind of actually picking up steam thanks to Smash Brothers, as well as the 3DS having some legitimately good games on it. Um, and Directs also just had this fun energy to them that were really unique and, and quirky and weird. Like the time where they were all Muppets, or the time that they were all... Or the time they just straight up did robot chickens... A, a robot chicken segment. I miss that energy. And I understand that they probably just changed image about it since Satoru Iwata's tragic passing, but... I don't know, man. I, I miss 2014 sometimes. I feel like that was kind of one of the peak years as far as... um gaming news and stuff goes. And... People left? Yeah. Like, it just felt like a lot of things went right that year, but... But life happens, and... things change. Which is... a bummer, but... You gotta take what you can, I guess, or something. It's... <sighs> I just... I just... I recently hit this kind of nostalgic, like, pang of... of... of just... longing, I guess. When I looked at my... my 2DS and all of the games... all the 3DS games I have, and... when all those released, which... you know, some released in particular... Some released in one era, some released in another era. And I just think like and it just it just sucks. So it just sucks because it's like I I Like I think for instance a lot of the cool stuff that was just thrown out of thrown out and really interesting, like I don't know. We both grown up with that sex. <laughs> yes, that that is also the real tragedy of our realities, but you know what? Again, it it be what it be sometimes. But I think the biggest thing that I just miss is how just more just more alive everything felt, I guess. 
Like, not. it's not to say that, you know... It's not to say Nintendo nowadays aren't doing well enough and they aren't releasing good games, because they are releasing good games, you know? They're releasing and publishing and developing pretty good games, all things considered. It's just... I don't know. I just have this yearning for some of the days when it just feels like they kind of gave fans what they would like to some extent. Granted, there were still some elements that they could have fixed up, you know? The the eShop situation with, with the rebuying, but that's that was something that I don't think was ever going to be solved. And then, of course, you all know my feelings about the Nintendo Online stuff. For me, it's not just Nintendo, but the way the world feels in general. Yeah. God, 2014 was back when I was, a, when I was like, in the Ruby fandom. Like, in it. I was a bigger Ruby fan back in 2014 than I probably ever was going on from that series. And nowadays, you know, this that series, and it's, it has a spinoff that, for as, as far as I know, is actually getting pretty good coverage and is well-received. And I just think about it, and I'm like, wow. It's been, like, eight? No, nine years since the first release of it. And it fucking exploded. And it's still kind of... Ex and it's still popular to an extent, to the degree that now we've got this Studio Shaft-made spinoff series and a shit ton of merch. And... You know, the the latest volume's gonna be finally coming out. Granted, I don't think I'm gonna watch it, because I've fallen hard off of that. But it's nice that people are still enjoying it. You know? Even further back when I'd be been drove into Toys R Us after getting getting a good report card. For me, my big report card deal was that I got paid for my good grades. My parents just straight up gave me money for it. But yeah, I remember a lot of things just being really positive. Have you seen any of the cyberpunk anime? No, but I have heard it's pretty good. But I have heard good things about it. But I, ha I have seen, like, some animation cuts of it. Ow! I have seen some animation cuts of it, and I am interested in seeing it. It's just... It just depends on finding the real want to sit down and watch it on Netflix. Because I'm typically the kind of guy that likes to watch his stuff, like, by himself and... I, I like to watch my th my stuff on my own, um, sitting in the den area and getting to see it, like, at my own pace. I don't like... I don't... I... I'm gonna have to change out of this. I do that much damage when I do a technique. There we go. Nice. She JoJo posed at the end. 
Shadow Tracer creates a Shadow Devil. I have no idea what the purpose of that is. Anyway, um... Yeah, I just... I... I just just felt this kind of nostalgic pang when I look back at all the old games I played back in before 2020 and even before 2015 because I, I get the feeling like I have this just I think back to how things just went wrong or how things just kind of went different to an extent and I and I don't want to sound like, oh, back in my day, things were better, but it just felt like when 2014 was around, things just didn't feel so jaded. No. Things just didn't feel so fucking... I don't know how to put it. Like, I... I really wish I knew how to put this. It It's just It just felt like a lot of things went right, you know? The 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 Pokémon Sapphire and and Ruby remakes, the the Ruby Volume 2 coming out and how how that just only perpetuated the fucking storm that that series was causing. I don't know. But then, you know, after 2015, Satori Iwata passed away, Monty Ulm passed away, and... Then a lot of the political news was coming around, and how fucking... God, how that brought out so much of the worst in people. And then my move to the Midwest was coming up. But we still had some interesting games, you know? We still had the uh, remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, which no one saw coming. But sadly, thanks to that not selling, Nintendo's like, oh, people aren't interested in these older Fire Emblem games being remade. Uh, excuse me for a second. I need to...
Sorry about that, guys. That was my mom. She, uh, was letting me know about some stuff. Okay. Where were we? Uh, now. We got a shadow tracer? Oh, right. I can double up on attacks now. That's something. But yeah, I'm like I, I'll I'll try and I'm try I try my best sometimes to not come off as like nostalgia heavy like yearning for the for the good old days. But it's really hard to not um it's not it's really hard to not yearn for the good old days when the when the current old days are being you know as they are. So I'm just. The most I'm just doing right now is trying to live the best day by day and just hope that cool stuff gets announced that can light a fire under my ass, so to speak. And maybe we'll get that with Tokyo Game Show. Who knows? Because there could still be Dragon Quest news on that front. I'm just saying. Dragon Quest Builders 3. That'd be a, that would be an interesting one, because I know Builders 1 and 2 are really popular among pe among fans, or even just non-Dragon Quest fans. Like, people really liked that. And good on them for it, because, you know... Like... Big fans of that kind of stuff, they, they get... If they get that, then good on them. I'm nearly dead. Alright, fuck it. I'm just going down. Actually, no, fuck this whole thing. I'm going back to... town. Alright, let's save. Yeah, I'm not... And it's as I mentioned before, as nice as it would be to get some Dragon Quest stuff that could that could be like what I would want, I'm not gonna hold that guillotine over the head of of this whole event because in the end, uh, the devs and the publishers will post what they feel like. They they will they will reveal what they choose is is necessary. And if it's not what the fans want, well, then better luck next event, I suppose. Who knows? I'm gonna test something. Because I got swordfish. Okay, I guess it's not with this sword. Weird, wasn't there a technique I, I had? I know there was a te- Because the, uh, the clone used it on me. Yeah. Miriam, what are you doing? I'm practicing my sword, Johannes. Oh, that spear is actually way better. What did you send me, combo? Let me see. Yeah, I, I, 
Oh man, I feel that nowadays. And believe me, I seen that shirt and I gave that shirt a like because I am in, in agreement to some extent regarding that uh that shirt. It's like on one hand the internet has done a lot to connect people the globe over. Some people probably have met people that are some of the best in their lives thanks to the internet. But let's face it, the internet's also full of a lot of really stupid horse shit that in a lot of ways is also... I wouldn't say irreparably, but it kind of has made people regress in terms of social etiquette, I guess, or even just the etiquette of what is and is not right to say in front of people, which pfft, I'm not going to get into because that's into because so that's getting into sociology shit and I'm not a sociologist and I don't feel like being a sociologist. I don't feel like being a psych a, a psychoanalyst of, of people that use the internet frequently as a person that uses the internet frequently. So Hmm. But, yeah, it's just some of the shit that you see on the internet just makes you wonder, like, what? Do these people not believe in a formal education or even an education period? Like, are these people allergic to... Like, are they allergic to learning or allergic to knowledge? Like, just... What? What? This person has the financial, probably, independence to be able to have a phone, have an internet connection for said phone or computer, and be able to do things on it. And yet, for some fucking reason, I don't know if I even turned in that quest or not. Um... Um, like they, ha like they have all these things that do make them by definition a functioning adult, and yet they just say and do these things that just are so, just, like, what makes you draw these conclusions about things? Probably the biggest, probably the biggest contender of this, of this mindset is the, is the recent... Uh, controversy, if you can... The recent stuff about the... The Little Mermaid live-action film. Like... Which is a can of worms in and of itself that I don't really feel like opening on here. At all. But, let's just say, like, holy shit, the internet has changed the landscape of, of us as as a people. You know? It's it's just it just is interesting in a lot of ways that it's interesting both in like a sociological way and also the kind of ways where it just makes you want to have a beer after like to take to take the hardest drink you could ever think of in your life and just be like oh god I'm not drunk enough to hear these hot takes. God, this music's good.
Okay. Nice. Oh, damn, lava's got damage. There we go. Poison Kukri, that's cool. Still no hidden wall. Cool. Got it. Man, but I really love some fucking, like, food items or something to gain. That'd be lovely. Just saying. that dragon egg yeah that's what I needed and now I can make a crate oh god bug stretch ow Please let me find a safe spot. Fuck off. Oh my god, really? I'm... Okay. I, I can't do much there because of the le lack of healing for one thing. And the other thing, I'm bouncing around there like a fucking pinball. Like, I can go down there and try again, but holy shit. All right. Uh, what's left? It's and the other thing I gotta do is probably make a different spear or something if I can help it. Ooh, hello. An icy club. That might actually be better in the fire area. Crescent blade of a general used to take on whole armies alone. Not that much better than what I've got, but you know what? I'll take it. And I'll, I'll make and equip that. Yeah. And I st can I still not? I still cannot. Got any Here's what I've turned up on monsters. Okay, so Ega, Revenant, Millionaire's Bane, Demon Lord, Gushin. Cool. Well, I need to. Well, I need to buy more stuff anyway. Oh, cool. I have. What are you looking to buy? Is this? Then we have a deal. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna. I need to buy some more potions, actually. Or the not potions, waystones. That's it. Is this? Then we have a deal. Thank. All right, what'd you send me this time? Oh yeah, God of War was, yeah.
Yeah, if God of War was shown in the Nintendo Direct. Yeah, it does feel like... <laughs> you know, if Santa Monica Studios maybe had a sense of humor, or at the very least had the same vigor they had in the back in the day when they paraded a dead goat to, to, to advertise God of War, maybe they could have made fun of the Nintendo Direct for that. In a similar fashion to when the, uh, that recently announced Monkey Island... Uh, game made fun of the horse armor DLC thing, which came literally after Hogwarts's fucking horse armor announcement. Oh my god, that was fucking brilliant. That was the, that was so funny. That was that could not have been timed any better at all. Like I I. I bet you to find something that was more perfectly timed than that. Like, that almost felt like that whole uh, Gamescom event specifically did that just to fuck with those devs. To be like, hey, Hogwarts devs, this is the rest of the world clowning on you and your horse shit. Also, you need to tell J.K. Rowling to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Please. But, yeah, that was... That was I, I've, I like the I like whenever game companies or or just companies in general can just rag on each other like that. It's kind of why Wendy's is popular on social media as she is or as they are. Hey, there we go. Resist darkness. Nice. If only... Actually, do I have a resist fire? Uh, resist darkness, resist thrust, firearm expertise. No. I have literally... I have so many, but not resist fire. Oh, well. I have an ice weapon, so that should compensate finally. So yeah, I'm I, like I like a lot of the gaming news that has been coming around, but we can all just kind of agree that some bits are more positive than others. Like the state of play thing had that Hogwarts Legacy game, and like, listen, I was never a Harry Potter fan to ever to start with. You know, never read the books. I only saw like one of the movies. You know, I'm I am not a Harry Potter person, so I don't quite I don't have the attachment that others do to it, and I don't have for I don't have the same kind of vitriol that people are experiencing towards J.K. Rowling for essentially being an absolute piece of shit human being. But it really doesn't help that she did that much for a lot of people and then she expresses these things and then you know so much of so much of the license holders for Harry Potter have to do damage control because she's being such an asshole it's just like wow and the thing is is that maybe some people will would like um maybe some people would like Hogwarts Legacy but they wouldn't really attempt to figure out because guess what? They're 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 um the person in ch the person who created their franchise is just being an absolute asshole for tw towards those that the story really helped in terms of their life. So yeah, yeah. 
I just, I just think that I just don't really care about Harry Potter in general, which I, according to some, probably, according to one of my friends, is like you, you're, you're off lucky on that one. Oh god, body stretch. Still curry powder. I would love an actual fucking healing item, please, but... Alright. Another stretchy. Lethality ring. That's a new one. What's that one? Uh, ring that increases the damage you inflict with critical hits. Well, if I went for a critical hit build, then maybe I'd go for that. Alright, what have we got here? Got here. There, please give me a save room. Thank you, God. All right. Well, I think with that much excitement, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I wasn't hoping to have a really long stream today. Mostly, um, mostly just something to, uh, I was just wanting to do some exploring and then catch up on some gaming news that came around recently. So, yeah, I just, uh, I, I, I am, I am generally positive with a lot of the news that was displayed, but I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, like, I don't hate the stuff that was shown, but I'm not super like, oh god, yes please. But maybe that'll change in the Tokyo Game Show. I don't know, we'll have to see. But, in any case, uh, hope you all enjoyed yourselves in the stream. Uh, be sure to follow my Twitter and here on Twitch to see when I go live next. And with that said, uh, take care of yourselves, everybody. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.